Hi, my name is Mel Wolverson with the Division of IT, and this time we're going to talk about Zoom and how to run a meeting. We're going to first open the Zoom app, as I have here, and start without video. This opens up a new meeting. Immediately, you see Join Audio Conference by Computer, and you're allowed to test your computer mic and speakers. I do recommend testing it, whether you've got a headset, computer mic, or regular speakers, whatever you're using. Test it before the meeting. If you are using a phone, you can switch to phone call and dial into the meeting, and that's perfectly okay. Today I'll be using computer audio because I've already got that set up. I'll select Join Audio Conference by Computer. Now here's my meeting. I'm going to select Manage Participants at the bottom. You'll see it as soon as you move your cursor. And that opens the participant window over on the right hand side. The participant window allows me to see who's here, mark people as host, mute everyone if there's an interference problem, unmute everyone, uh, see how everyone's doing, all that sort of thing you can do with the participant list. You can also select chat at the bottom of the screen. Chat allows everyone in the conversation to just type in a message. This is a great place for people to put questions and let you know if there's something wrong with the audio. If you do plan on using your audio and your video together, I recommend clicking on the arrow next to start video and selecting video settings. Hi, that will allow you to test your video, make sure that you have your video settings correct, and make sure that everything looks good. Do you want HD, high quality? Do you want widescreen? Do you want to enable a mirror effect, which will change how text behind you may appear? And you can touch up appearance, which just adds a little blur. So it's up to you, you can change those settings, but it's a really good idea to test, make sure the camera is facing in the right direction, make sure everything's gonna work before you go ahead and continue to jump into the meeting. I'll close this. Now I'm ready to share my screen. So down at the bottom, I can click the share screen button there, or I can click the icon share screen in the middle. In the share screen dialog, you've got a lot of different options. Desktop one shows up by default, and you may have more than one. So desktop two, three, those are only if you have other monitors though. If you just have the one monitor, you'll just see desktop one. Whiteboard allows you to collaborate. You can draw, add text, and everybody can collaborate on the same thing. You can only save it as a photograph though, a JPEG. So there are limitations. I recommend if you need something like that, open up a Word document, share it on your desktop, and then everyone can add content uh, just by telling the person who's doing the typing to add it in. You can show an iPhone or an iPad via cable or AirPlay, and that allows the benefit of showing apps that you might not normally be able to show in a video. Of course, you can show your camera. You can show a specific app. One upside of showing a specific app versus your full desktop is that none of your notifications from your other applications will appear when you're showing just a single app. When you're sharing your desktop, all of your email notifications and things like that are going to pop up. So that's just something to know about. However, if you are sharing more than one application, for instance, you're showing a website, and then maybe you're showing a PowerPoint, and then maybe you're ending up with a video, then you should probably go ahead and go with desktop because that's going to give you more flexibility, a little bit quicker, rather than stopping the share, starting it, stopping the share, starting it. I'll choose this PowerPoint and I'll go ahead and share my screen. I'll go ahead and start the presentation. It may be tempting to just have the presentation from here and just show them the slide as it is, but it really does give them a much better view of the presentation if you go full screen. So down at the bottom towards the right hand corner, you should see a slideshow button. Click on that and that'll actually start your full slideshow. Then you can go through your different slides one at a time and finish up your presentation with audio. It's a good idea to have someone else keeping a, a look over your shoulder because right now you'll notice we can't see the chat and we can't see the participants. Now if I go up to the top where it says stop share and I hover over that, you can see I can select manage participants and it does show me the participants just like it did before, but that covers my slide and that doesn't help me present. It's also very distracting when you're presenting. So unless you have two monitors, I recommend removing that and just have someone else help you out. You can do the same thing with the chat. That is under more and then chat. Now, while I'm doing a screen share, let me go over to the left-hand side and select start video. 
that allows me to share a video at the same time that I'm sharing a presentation, a slide, whatever content you're trying to share, this is going to allow you to have that personal touch on top of it. A lot of people like to do this, again, at the very beginning of a presentation when they're greeting people and they want get people to get to know them. But some people do it throughout the presentation. It just depends on your particular content and whether you need that as an option. I'll go ahead and stop video. I do want you guys to note that while I'm sharing my screen, I can annotate it. So if I go up to where I see stop share and hover over that for a second, I can select annotate. The annotation bar pops up and now by default, I have a drawing tool. So I can highlight something and I can draw an arrow to it. Hey, this is really important. Uh, I can add text to this screen. So I'll say a very important topic. And I'll highlight that, that's control A. And there's a format option where I can change the color, I can change the font, I can change a variety of different things about the text. And again, this is going to save, if you select the save button, as a JPEG, that's a flat photograph, in the same file as a recording if you're doing a screen recording. If I wanna just clear this off, just clear off the slide, get rid of everything, I can select clear, and I can select clear all drawing, and that removes all annotation. It's a great feature. It's nice when you're sharing a information with a class, you can share it a little bit more quickly. So I'll go up to the top now, I'll close the annotation bar with the X in the top left, and then I'll go ahead and select stop share at the very top. And that takes me back to my main meeting. Just as a quick reminder, manage participants and the chat, you can have up on the right if you do not have a screen share going, and you can comment and answer questions there. It's a really nice place to answer questions at the very end of your presentation. Now, once you're done with your presentation, first of all, don't forget to stop recording. If you were recording, there's the record button down at the bottom there. You can also select end meeting. If you select end meeting, that's at the bottom right hand corner in red, I'll select that. You have two options, leave meeting and end meeting for all. Leave meeting just means you remove yourself from the meeting and the meeting continues if you've set that option in your defaults. In meeting for all means the meeting itself ends and everyone else is closed out, meaning they are kicked out of the meeting, the conversation ends. So it's up to you. If you're the last one in like I am, then it's perfectly okay to end meeting for all. That concludes my presentation on running a meeting and sharing your screen. I hope this has been very helpful and I hope you have a good experience with Zoom. Thank you.